for the colleagues that are here. It's it's a pleasure and honor for me to be invited for uh, for the our uh, agrarian change journal and and the colleagues uh, based in in SOAS and and also widely. So I will um, talk today about a topic that Jens already mentioned, and I will share the screen here uh, in order to, to start. Let me see here. So uh, Jens, could you yes, tell me if, you, if it's, it's fine? Yes. Okay. So well, the title is the title is here. I, um, I, I uh, Jens already introduced me. I'm now here in Montpellier in the Make It. Uh, cohort program. Uh, and what I would like to talk today is a little bit uh, about uh, the themes and subject that is is um, is challenging me in the last uh, in the last uh, couple of years uh, in the field of uh, agrarian rural studies and but now focusing more on food issues. Uh, in the in the summary I, I sent to to the to the presentation today, I, I I said that this presentation will review central drivers for current um, uh, for current problems of food system, discussing discusses some alternatives and intends to highlight the need to better position food matters in agrarian studies. So my main arguments are three in this in this presentation. First. My argument will be that food has become a key issue to understand changes in global capitalism. Uh, second, structural, structural drivers has climate issues, energy transition and urbanization. Uh, they are repositioning food in the current debates. And thirdly, the political economy, uh, which is the disciplined approach that most of us uh, we 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 follow has something to say about that, uh, but it needs to go beyond the current agrarian fossil that's still very strong in uh, in this uh, in this uh, field of studies. So uh, uh, I I I will start by saying that agrarian question, just to to give a, a, a quick overview about about the, 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 the agrarian question, which is, which is that in the 20th century, of course, agrarian questions uh, issues started before that in the 19th century, but during, during 20th century agrarian, agrarian issues, but, but were, were more related to the side of supply, the side of the production on, on agriculture and rural, and rural spaces, focusing on supply the, the, and on, on production, technology issues, and cost of the production and the scale and trade. And in the urban side, in the, in the industry, issues were related to in what extent people have uh, wages, uh, salaries to buy, to access this food, and if the food was safe uh, safe to, 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 uh, to consumption. Uh, this in uh, uh, more, let's say, in a uh, in, uh, in mainstream perspective. In our field of studies, agrarian questions, as you well know, it uh, uh, has the definition of Livian and, and also co-authors is here. And also Arun uh, Akran Lodi and, um, and Chris Kay, uh, with, different, with, with three different approaches, which are already well known. I will not insist that much on that. This tradition of agrarian studies uh, relies on Marx and the Marxists, basically on, in Marx, you know, the discussion that is in the literature about agrarian question one, agrarian question two, and agrarian question three and four. Uh, and then later on the debates of Lenin and Kautsky, uh, which is uh, uh, been uh, widely reflected by Henry Bernstein, which is a distinguished scholar in this school of SOAS, uh, it's, uh, it's my good friend and I, I learn a lot with his and, and he defines uh, in, 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 in his perspective, the agrarian question, uh, it's the, the classical agrarian question uh, is so far over and, and, he, and he proposes the, 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 
the questions of labor, you know, agrarian questions of labor. You are already familiar with that. So I will try to elaborate on that uh, in my presentation today by saying that I, I in, in certain extent, I agree with Henry about class, uh, agrarian question of labor, but in my perspective, what we are seeing and facing today in current times is a, is a, is a, is a, is a food question. And I will try to elaborate on that. Just to say a final word about two recent publications on, on agrarian questions in which food issues are, are you know, are, 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 let's say, how I can say, uh, are, are, I will not say that they are not in, but they are very, very lightly uh, touched by the handbook in the handbook of critical agrarian studies, which was published uh, two, a year ago. Uh, it, it's a beautiful book. I recommend this book for everyone. Uh, everyone should have this book and read it. It's an amazing uh, uh, publication. And uh, last week, just uh, John Boras uh, uh, published an, a very insightful piece uh, in, Thai, in Journal of Pest and Studies, uh, titled it Political Engagement, Pluralistic and International Critical Agrarian Studies Today. And in this article, food issues are also uh, not, uh, not present. Of course, they, they touch, they discuss the international food system, but food has, has, a, has, a, has a cornerstone, has a, has a background for the, for, the critical, uh, agrarian, for the critical studies. It's not, uh, it's not based like that. It's not, it's not approached like that. So in my opinion, in, to, to, in order to positioning the, 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 food, the, food, uh, the food issues as a food question in current times, we have to focus, we had to, we had, we had to uh, 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 positioning that in, 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 in the context of some structural changes or structural drivers of changes, which are the climate change, the demographic issue or urbanization of our societies and the issue of decarbonization of our energy sources. These three problems, which actually are three big crises, are intertwining problems we are facing. In a context of a capitalism, uh, contemporary capitalism, which is more and more um, characterized as a, as a system or a mode of production based on, on uh, not that much on production, not that much on, 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 on labor as it was in the 18th and 19th century, but on financially and in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the interrelation of three fields, financialization, digitalization, and consumerism. No, I will not elaborate on that about the capitalism has a mode of production as it is, but I will just uh, design. I will just uh, feature this uh, this this mode of production as it is current uh, in in our current times, because this uh, gives me the framework to elaborate and to situate and to position the food issues in this capitalism, in the capitalism which is financialized, which is di digi increasingly digitalized and increasingly uh, urban. Consumerism is driving this, this capitalism. I also would like to remind here, just to comment because I review and I like very much Carlotta Perry's perspective on the five technological revolutions. And she agrees or she states that we are actually in the middle of a fifth um, uh, uh, technological revolution, which is the, uh, the technological revolution of information technology and telecommunications, she said in his, uh, in his books and in his presentation. This process of, in which we are now brings a lot of uncertainty, distrust, envir risks, environmental risks, and increasingly inequalities and multiple, multiple exclusions. So we are in the middle, we are in the middle of a big, big crisis in the middle of a process of transition or we, there are different words we can use. Uh, I will elaborate a little bit on that later on. Uh, but we are more or less, 
we are more or less lost in the big jungle without any without any 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 localizer in order to 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 tell us where is the direction to go out and this will probably uh, stay for quite some time nobody really knows how much time it will take to the end of the war uh, ukrainian war how much time it will take until we find an alternative fair source of energy that would be at least um, capable to, to, uh, uh, um, to substitute uh, um, the fossil fuel and, and so on. Well, um, just to, to try to, to, to look at evidences from, for what I'm saying here is a report from the Global Risk Report 2022, let last year and this report of it, it was done by a very conventional uh, think tank which is world economic forum but anyway i, I just use this to because they are uh, these guys this this thing this uh, these thinkers they also agree that climate change weather and biodiversity loss are the three the three main risks in the the societies uh, that we are living now so in this moment we are living a lot a lot of problems a lot of, of of issues are related to the way that we 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 produce we consume we transform and we deal with food issues so this is my this is my point and this is why i i will i i will uh, elaborate on the on the hypothesis that we need to focus on food and food changes in order to uh, analyze what's going on in our societies, in our times uh, that we are living. So this is why then food has become an opportunity for new political, new normative, which means uh, policy, a new academic perspective, I would say epistemological perspective, for to rethink our field of studies. So my point here is that, and I myself engage involved in that, you know, has with, with my background on agrarian studies, I think it's time to go or to make a shift in direction to, uh, to, uh, to, food, to food studies or food critical studies. Or, and uh, and, and this, is, this is my point in this, in this presentation for, for you, and we can discuss it uh, a little bit later. And why is that so? Because food has become a key point in the relation, in the nexus with energy and environment, as I already sketched out. And because of this, we are, we are facing a transition or a, or, a, or, a, or a change in agriculture. Actually, we, people are less talking about agriculture, at least some people, and people are talking uh, more and more about food. They talk about food and climate change. They talk about food and health and nutrition. And they talk about food in terms of the process of uh, uh, supply and, and uh, uh, the, urban, the urban population or, 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 or the supply, the urban citizens. So this, has, this, is, this is so why. In, in one, one, one side of the debate is because our dominant food system is broken, is completely in crisis, I would say. And the crisis is there. Of course, the hegemonic system is still very strong. I come from a country, Brazil, where the, 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 the hegemonic system is, 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 uh, is still is, is absolutely dominant. And even a lot of scholars, a lot of uh, colleagues in, in science and in social science, they do not believe that this system is in crisis. You know, and what I'm saying that looking at from a, from a perspective, a more, more global, more general, we can say, yes, this food system has it is shaped and has it is structured, is in crisis and is broken and his basic and his pillars are, are, are not solid. So it must be, change and to change the food system the hegemonic food system we need a new theory and a theory and a policy and also a set of practices that helps us to go beyond this broken system so what why and 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 what in what extent this system is broken because of the issues of nutrition the industrial agriculture the conventional food system i like to 
I don't like to talk with, as, as in Brazil, it has become common sense, agro, agro, agro negocio or agribusiness, you know, um, a North American concept. I like to, 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 to feature the system as industrial agriculture or conventional agriculture. And the conventional agriculture is failing in terms of addressing issues of, of uh, healthy food, in terms of uh, reducing poverty, and in terms of overcoming uh, the hunger situation around the world. And, is, um, uh, uh, and the externalities of this system, which is, not, uh, uh, which is failing in terms of economics and, and in terms of health, this was the big this was the big flag, this was the big, uh, let's say, reference of Green Revolution in the 60s, saying that we need to produce more because we have to, we have to overcome of hunger, food insecurity and poverty. So this, was, this is completely a lie, this is a fail, and it's a huge failure of, of, this, of this model. And uh, the externalities are even worse of this system. Uh, the system is not, uh, it's not fulfilling the economic and the social promises, but is even failing in terms of affecting the global soil degradation. Here we have, we have a figure that comes from my colleague, Nicolas Bricas here in Sirat, uh, that's saying that 64% of the agricultural land is, uh, is contaminated with, pesticides, with chemical pesticides. And is also related to how, how, uh, how the land use is affecting especially the tropical forest. My country and Latin America and South America is an example how deforestation is related uh, with soy, soy production for, for, uh, for exportation. So what is happening in South America and in Brazil particularly is related to what's going on uh, more uh, generally with this international or global food system which is producing soy outsourcing Chinese soy production in, this, in, in, in South America to export to, the, to Asia and to, uh, to supply their, their, uh, their food system. So it's, the system is also a huge fail. It's a huge lie in terms of the uh, nutrition because nu under nutrition, obesity are some of the key drivers. And if you, uh, here is a here is an article that just was was just published in in um, in the UK, which is saying that if we look at the micronutrients of the of the production of the food that is produced, is also uh, a huge a huge uh, reduction in terms of the of the nutritional uh, uh, condition. Uh, over and 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 a long and 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 a long uh, study. Um, uh, comparing uh, 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 1940 to 1991, saying that overall 80, 80 years, there were significant nutritional important reductions in different micronutrients in different, in different foods. And this is the same about pesticides. You know, the number of pesticides that which are spread in our, in our fields today, everywhere, this is the case of Brazil, you can see here, on the left, uh, how the number of pesticides, the, the quantity of pesticides, the tons of pesticides spreading in agriculture were, were, uh, were, were done in order to obtain. So because all of this, the food system, the conventional food system is broken, is failing. And it has become more and more clear for all, for all people, uh, this failure um, uh, through, the, through the issue of climate change. Climate change is today the mod. I I I I I I put it in my summary. Uh, is the mother of all the crises. I I I completely um, convinced that climate change is 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 the big is the big the problem, uh, the big trouble that we have in the 21 century, and uh, and and um, and climate change. Uh, and the way it has it has it uh, set the climate change issues is is absolutely directly relate with the way that we uh, that we produce food and we consume food. So in the last global meetings, food has become a clear driver for climate change. And and this I think is a, is a, is a, is an is an important point that we have to address now 
in terms of our focusing on agriculture and studies. So there are plenty of data. I will not uh, take too much time uh, talking to you about that because the way that we use the land and the food production is, is responsible for a, lot of, uh, for a lot of emissions in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of agriculture. The agriculture itself is, the, is, is, is one, of the, one of the key sectors. Here we have the emissions. Here, here we have global emissions. Um, uh, 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 and here we have the emissions per country, the 10 countries that do the, the, big, uh, the big emissions. Uh, by curiosity, it's China, India, and, uh, and, uh, and Brazil uh, in terms of farm gate emissions, land use change, and pre and post production. Uh, they are championing the the, the, the greenhouse, the green uh, gases uh, emissions uh, around the world. So um, here you can see a figure that shows how much every, every, every uh, um, uh, activity from agriculture and food is, is contributing to, uh, to production. Food itself is 26% and non-food is 74%, even though if you look at, for instance, uh, livestock and fisheries, uh, they are related to, to that. So this is why then it has become so clear and has become so strong uh, and has a sociologist, I, I would say, has uh, uh, the classical sociologist always say, if we are in, a, in, a, in a, uh, seeing a, a social fact that is repeating and is, in, uh, and, 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 and is uh, uh, bringing uh, external coercion, we can say that we are in the presence of a, of a sociological fact. So food is actually become the main sociological fact in current times. And this is uh, absolutely clear. Uh, we can see that about the debates on global debates that we had have in, uh, in COP27 and, and so on. So it has become a kind of consensus that the way that we produce our food matters. It's the, it's the call of the IPCC, the, uh, the panel for climate change. You know, or agriculture and food and deforestation are major drivers for climate change. These are the announcements. These are the, the messages uh, that come coming, coming out from this, uh, from this herd science. Uh, uh, and, and, uh, and, they, uh, and they has a lot to, to, to say. So the way we, we then produce, the way to use intensive chemi chemical monocropping, intensive livestock production, mass production, the, and, 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 and the way that the, the supply chains are organized, they are key drivers for, for, for the problems that we are facing. And these problems, they unfold. They also trans, uh, they, 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 they can be per, 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 Perceive in other in other in other sites on, for instance, the undernourishment. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, stakeholders from the conventional system they say, "Oh, we need to produce more because we have to we have to uh, uh, overcome uh, poverty and and hunger." But the problem is that the system is failing. It's not is not feeding the people. It's not nourishing the people because undernourishment of the societies in all over the world has has not uh, disappeared. So we, we still have about 2.3 billion people in the world in food insecurity, most of them in Africa, but also in other countries. Even in developed, developed countries, we have people living in food insecurity because they have no healthy food to eat. So food is also a key driver for energy, for CO2 emissions. So then, uh, if we want to talk about decarbonize, decarbonize, decarbonization our our energy system, we need to think about the role of agriculture and especially the use of the of the of the of the fertilizers that rely on on uh, on uh, on uh, on petrol and on on fuel uh, on on on, uh, on fuel uh, fossils. So here again, it's another data full of data, my, my presentation. So in, in, in what extent the environmental impacts, uh, what are the environmental impacts of agriculture? So you, you can see here increased greenhouse uh, 
uh, gases emissions, land use, freshwater use, eutrophication, and biodiversity. So the red line is how agriculture affects all these uh, items. So it's it's uh, it's it's more than clear. It's it's absolutely it's absolutely over over clear. And here and here again, this is this is just for France. For instance, if you look at the emissions of French agriculture, uh, just just pr uh, agriculture production in France alone is is responsible for sixty five point six. Uh, percent of the of the of the emissions so i i will not uh, bothering you uh, too much with this uh, same argument but this is the point you know i'm making the point that food is a driver for the big problem for the mother of the crisis that we are facing today which is climate climate change and related issues but this is also related to the urban to the urbanization to the urban world so as the societies are becoming more urban, food is becoming a, a, a key issue because we need to, to think, we need to organize a food system in terms to feed a, 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 an, an increasing urbanizing world. And uh, these are figures from Jason Moore, where he shows that with this process of urbanization, this completely, completely rearrange, completely repositioning the way that we uh, feed the societies, we, we feed the people. And the conventional system do, does this in terms of, you, uh, of feeding people, nourishing people with uh, a high, uh, highly protein and highly, uh, highly caloric uh, uh, food. This is why most of people are suffering from blood pressure and, and, and other problems. The point is that we already have enough food. So, but the food we, we have with this conventional system is not healthy, it's not good, you know? The, again, the case here, uh, uh, here from FAO, uh, uh, to, 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 uh, which I took from my colleague, uh, Nicola again, uh, which, which shows that the production, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's increasing more, more fast, more fast than, the, than, the, than the population. The rates of, the increase of productivity in agriculture is 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 uh, is 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 increasing uh, more than 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 the population that needs. So it's 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 a fraud to say that there is no enough food in the world today. There is enough food. FAO and other organizations they know that, and they know that we don't need to produce more. We need to distribute better. We need to make better access to food and not produce more. So this is this is a key point in terms of studies, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, analysis uh, about the system as it is uh, as it is uh, uh, now. So the contradiction is plenty of food in a world of hunger and and poverty. Again, lots of data. I I will not keep my uh, my, my time on that because I I have still some other things to say. Uh, and these data are easily to, to gather. So uh, the point here is, of course, to not be naive, to not be Pollyanna, to not be a kind of, uh, let's say, um, let's say misleading uh, about this issue because food is not just a humanitarian problem. Nah, uh, food, food is actually uh, a problem of limit for economic growth and capitalist accumulation. So this is the point of a of a of an uh, of an approach of political economy how how we how we fit in how we how we how we how we um positioning food in this perspective of reflection on the economy on the capitalism which uh, we are living now so why food food matters in capitalism it's 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 the question because of prices and access to food Everyone knows that if the prices of the food are too high, the salaries, the wages of the urban classes or the, of, of the people need to be higher. And most of that cannot afford to buy enough food. So, uh, so the price of the food, it matters for, for, uh, for capitalist uh, 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 stability, economic stability and, and, uh, and, uh, and for the working class, especially. Uh, also the prices of food relates to the to the to the to the energy because has food 
industry food sector is using a lot of, of a lot of uh, energy inputs if if the energy basis increase the the prices of food do uh, do the same or go in the same direction so this is why then food has uh, has a key driver for, for for global changes the global economy relies on the way that food is produced and is is uh, traded and is and, uh, and is consumed so here we have a still another another reason how much how many people uh, make their livelihood in food system uh, the there is a calculation from people from the united states that is about 1.3 billion people from 8 billion uh, inhabitants that the planet have so it's quite important uh, it, it, one person in in each seven or eight almost eight uh, work and make their livelihood in in uh, in the in the food system. So and here, sorry, maybe you will get mad with me for show you this uh, this uh, this uh, this picture, this figure. This is uh, a leader of the World Bank of the of, of International Fund uh, Monetary Fund. But I, I find it funny that she says, Kristina Georgieva says that if inflation of food and energy will hike things will become serious in the next times. People are getting angry, you know, and people in Europe and especially here in France, they are already angry with the, with the, with the, the energy prices. For instance, here in Montpellier, people are paying more for the baguette, for the breads, you know, because, because the prices of the, of the energy to produce for the, for the bakers increase about 30, 35%. And there is an expectation that if the, the war will, will, will go on, things will come worse. So then this is, this is why energy relates to food and food relates to uh, the way that people vote and the way that people are satisfied or not with polit politicians. So this is also what FAO and World Food Program says, show sounding alarms about the global food crisis and uh, in, in, this, in this moment. So this is why then food is so is so is so is so key is so is so central in the in the context that we are we are uh, we are uh, we are living now. So the uh, and 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 then it, it's not to be naive; it's to address this with the real tools of the political economy in terms to see who is who is doing what and who is winning, and who is uh, taking advantage of that. So the food question. And in that in that sense, is to go beyond or to go uh, ahead in terms of from the social stability and economic growth to actually an issue of development, development of capitalism. In fact, you know, food questions may uh, in in that sense, if we if we uh, as I already said, if we agree that food is uh, the food system, the food the food uh, the hegemonic food. Uh, uh, structure is failing is broken what then about alternative what then about the 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 the, the way out of this it, with using 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 approaches using analysis of political economy not just to criticize the food system as it is this is important this is most of the literature that is going uh, in in that direction the analysis are are, are quite good but i think we uh, scholars uh, researchers, social scientists, uh, scientists that deal with political economy or critical analysis of food issues, we are failing to not look at uh, real alternatives for the food system as it is uh, shaped, as it is organized now. So um, we we need to we need to look at first the available narratives that are, are here. Some of them are, are, are part of the state of the art, I would say. We have, a, we have a lot. We have a kind of menu of availability, which, uh, for instance, uh, encompass uh, our uh, food security or, and food sovereignty, which, for instance, is the approaches that a lot of people follow uh, 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 when they use uh, and, and they ana analyze agroecology. We have the focus on nutrition security, which are people that looking at agriculture sensitive to nutrition. We have the approach of social justice, 
Uh, we have the approach of uh, more conventional corporate sustainability related to food banks, green economy, and so on. And then now, for more recently, we have the approaches related to uh, the alternative proteins and, uh, and, and these debates. So just to show you some, some of that, of that uh, alternatives that may be possible to, to think about another development or another society, putting food in the in the in in the center of the of the analysis or or in the center of the approach one is uh, an, an interesting uh, uh, um, um, uh, approach which is uh, highlights uh, the work of Mario Nessel uh, she is from the United States uh, she she is a quite uh, active uh, scholar and she uh, and and other and other people that are working with food uh, they focus strongly on the issues of advocacy. We should ch change the system, uh, the, the conventional system, the hegemonic system as it is, using, using advocacy, using, as he said, bite back. These are some slides from a presentation that she gave. So I, I like it very much. Uh, I, I, these, are sites, uh, the, these are slides of her focusing on how advocacy can help to improve uh, 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 a focus on, on, on change, the system as it is. A second, a second way in, a, a second perspective is the science policy interface, which is being developed with lots of scientists, especially from the, from the, bio, from the biology and the earth science, and some personalities, some public, uh, some public uh, uh, people that believe that international organizations like FAO and uh, and World Food Program and uh, and uh, and the uh, and the panel of specialists, uh, especially the the panel the, the panel of climate change, they can play a role in terms to to show people how important it is to change uh, food in in our society. One of the works that that has uh, had a lot of. Um, a lot of uh, highlights and a lot of spots uh, is the is the the, the Eat Lancet Commission uh, report that which was published in 2019 and uh, and has quite a, quite some uh, impact in this uh, in this debate focusing on how change the food system is important to have uh, a, a new uh, a new diets or new 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 food habits. Uh, another one is 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 the role of social movements, the global social movements and civil society organizations. We, most of them work with food sovereignty or the idea of to denounce, to go or go over or to go beyond the conventional food system and defend uh, uh, local people. Most of them, uh, for instance, the case of the Via Campesina and so on. Then we have a fourth or fifth uh, approach, which is the new diet supporters, which is all kinds of urban movements like Vote With Your Fork, uh, local food initiatives, veganism, or alternative proteins, and so on. Here we have some of the, of the figures. More and more urban people are here involved, you know, uh, especially young people. Um, and uh, this is, for instance, a figure from a very famous think tankers, which is the goat, uh, the Good Food Institute, where they 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 promote uh, lab meat, especially plant-based meat, and also uh, 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 other kind of meat, in order to uh, suggest that we need that the big enemy of the of 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 the climate change is not food in a whole, but is just the production of of meat or 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 or, or the problem with beef. Okay. For us in South Brazil, this is a is a very is a very sensitive issue, and I think for the colleagues from Argentina too, because we really like to to have beef. Uh, and then we have the sustainable development follow, followers, which use the framework from the SDGs and the debates on degrow uh, theory, uh, like for instance, and also in the Green New Deal or green economy or poli uh, 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 ecological, politically, politically economy. So then I came to my point. So what's my perspective on that? So I, I first, uh, uh, before to go ahead in my, I think 10 or 10 minutes I have left, 
I will I, I will recognize that there is a field of studies. There is a there is a new new ontology and is a new different theories, perspective, political uh, approaches, and also epistemological approaches uh, 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 growing and working with food issues. This is really good. I like it. I think it, it's in, in, in this diversity that we will build this new approach. My point in, in this debate is that we need to reframe, we need to readdress the key questions or the key issues uh, from our from our inheritance in agrarian studies or uh, or agra critical agrarian studies and use them to give a step forward in terms of of to to do to make better analysis or to make analysis or to analyze the the current uh, food question and uh, uh, I, I just wrote this uh, I will not I have not the intentions to to be um, to to to, to encompass all the issues but in my in my perspective uh food the, the food question in terms of political economy is about how food become a driver for capitalism reproduction as a mode of production when the urban and rural and nature and human relations are reshaped in time and space which is the capitalism has we live on. so this is a structure the the, the the, the structure uh, we, of the society of the capitalist we are living and how food come in, comes in. Uh, second, what are the main strategies and resources that the actors, classes and fractions of classes use to produce and reproduce power relations or positions uh, in order to generate tools and mechanisms of domination in the structure of the social system? This is the issue of power here. So first then is the issue of the mode of production. Second point is the issue of power, which is, which is very, very important in, uh, in critical political economy. And third, how then which, uh, how, which and through what cultural tools and devices the hegemonic domination is shaped and uh, is shaped has an institutional mindset or ideology around the individuals, food habits and behaviors. <clears throat> if you will use the old uh, the old division uh, among infrastructure and superstructure, this is that my third point is about the superstructure or the or the uh, or the mindset, which because the food system in most of time, for instance, agribusiness in Brazil, agronegócio, is is far more than a mode of production. It's far more than concrete capitalism, in my opinion. Agribusiness, agronegócio in Brazil and South America is a mindset, is an institution. So, for to address food production and consumption, in order to better understand inequalities, multiple forms of exclusion shaped by race, gender, and class intersection. So, this is typically an analysis, an intersection of race, gender, and class related to food. Food is a matter in which you can recognize the different social position of male, females, young, old people, and different uh, 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 sex uh, uh, preferences or, 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 or position. And finally, to reflect, analyze, foster, and strengthen agency of all kinds of actors, collective groups, social movements, networks, uh, in, uh, and, also with the, and also the state policy makers committed with the food system that might promote values in a sense of sustainable development. So this is, is I, I, I would say, my, 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 my point in terms of, of action. So let's see how I, how, I, how I depict this. And with this, I will end up before we go to debate. Uh, this idea of, of, of food question in, in political economy relies on a lot of revision of uh, books. Some of them are here. Some of them I helped to write has this one, for instance, global rural development and food system. So now I will go to, to, the, to, the, to, to, to approach food system. So we, we, in the, the state of the art that we have now in, 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 in the debate of food system, we can find different perspectives. First is re reconversion, idea of to, to, to reconversion uh, the, the food system as it is. The second one is debates on transition. 
The third one is debates on transformation. You heard a lot of transformation, this and that. Then the fourth one is what I, uh, I, uh, I'm proposing, which is transformative transition. So you can see here my, 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 uh, my, uh, my gadget I, I, that I use. You know, I think we need transformation with transition. Just transformation is not enough. Transition is not enough too. And reconversion as business as usual. So reconversion business as usual. Transition is change to, to modify, but doing better with less. Uh, and transformation is change to transform, to build a new one. But what we really need is a transformation, a trans is a transformative transition, which is uh, something in between, because sometimes transformation, I think, is too much in terms of what we are seeing. So the, here there are lots of uh, uh, discussions on transformation, transformation. I will pop up. I'm a good accompany with, uh, in this debate with my good colleague, uh, Colin Sage. Colin Sage is uh, more or less uh, thinking in the same direction as me. I, I make the case to quote him here. and. Um, because his perspective is a little bit different of my ones. He says that he is building a counter narrative, which he calls conviviality. It's a set of uh, features here. I will not go in, in, uh, in deep, in, in uh, depict the, the them. And in the perspective to build a new paradigm on the right of the food. So I'm, I'm, I'm not in that. My perspective is, is, is what I will show you now. My perspective is what I'm calling uh, for the moment, at least in the moment, a kind of heterodox political economy of food, which encompass structures, institutions, and actors, uh, and which focus and which makes strong dialogues with Mariana Masucato, idea of uh, food has value. She wrote this beautiful book on the value of everything, which is, I think, is very inspiring to think about political economy of food. I think also uh, in the intersection among uh, food has a public good. Uh, even though I not adopt Ostrom, Latour, or Ayan Kaye perspective, but I think the our enemies, our criticism is against the utilitarian economy, to which they are very good. And food, in that sense, is a public good. It's not. It, it, it's it's not a, a just a, a biological uh, uh, input that we use to feed ourselves. Food is a public good, and and has public good, in, it needs to be defended by society, needs to be defended by the state, needs to be defended by social organization. And then food is a driver for social justice. And through food, we can address issues of uh, reduction of inequality. And we did, in, in, in that sense, food issues goes uh, in, in hand by hand by the work of uh, Thomas Piketty in terms of think uh, the ways in which we can promote basic income uh, 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 for people in terms that they can buy food. Because one of the big problems in, in developing countries to not, to, to, to not have uh, uh, access to food is because they have, no, uh, they have no income, they have no earnings to that. And finally, we have to locate food in a new ontology, political ontology, which is Food has a new utopia. You know, I, 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 I feel that we are living in a society that our big utopias are in crisis. And the crisis is exactly because we live these times of dystopia and uh, movements like uh, green social movements lead by young people uh, like Greta Thunberg or new food and diet habits fights against uh, the meat, the consumption of meat, or even, for instance, urban agriculture promoters, or some people, young people that are promoting uh, new cooperatives or new ways to go back to the to the rural. All this, what all these people are doing, in 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 a, in a, in a, in a general extent, I think, is promote a new food utopia. So in that, uh, I think uh, uh, they they are actually promoting a new mindset to overcome the conventional or the dominant mindset uh, uh, of agribusiness or, or conventional food system. Well, I will find, I, I, will, I will end up uh, my presentation with some theoretical uh, presentations or indicator because these are not yet 
enough elaborate. I'm, I'm still working on that. This is part of my ongoing work. Uh, so where I, where I situate, where I, where I loca locate my, 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 my idea of the political economy of food, which uh, I, I locate in this, in this, let's say, group of, group of scholars. The, the big one is, the main reference is uh, my, 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 uh, my, uh, my light, which is uh, Karl Polanyi, and then uh, uh, the work of uh, Mariana Masucato recently, and the critics that Jason Moore makes to the, uh, to the Capitalocene and the Anthropocene is, is absolutely fine and absolutely I agree with. But we cannot forget what Nancy Fraser is saying, that to look at the dimensions that that food uh, uh, that that uh, issues of race and uh, and gender brings in our society so thinking on on this reference in terms of food i think we can find a new a new way to deal with uh, with that perspective what we can take off from from mariana masucato is the concept of value value to produce food is to produce value what the, the other system, the conventional system is doing is extracting value. So this is what we don't want because extraction of value, it's not good for, for the nature. It's not good for the climate change. It's not good for the society. What we really need is a food value. Is food has value, food has public values. So the, the contradiction, and that is in the dialectical contradiction, I would say with among value creation and value extraction, which is, I think it's very, very powerful in, in uh, uh, conceptually and also politically. In that sense, uh, we need to, we can rethink the idea of growth, of growth and not think just idea of degrowth or idea to like, for instance, my so lots of colleagues in, 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 in my country and in my uh, continent think on the post-colonial approaches, which are against growth, they propose a degrowth theory, and I, I'm not uh, in favor of that. I need, I think, we need to grow, but not grow in terms just to accumulate, just to just to generate uh, um, uh, 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 technology or 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 wealth. But we need to 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 grow in terms to make distribution and to make inclusion and uh, distribution and inclusion in a sustainable way. Uh, this is then what values we are talking about. We are talking about three levels or three layers of values, not in general. This I think is Mariana Masukato needs to elaborate a bit because she, she, say, she says a lot about values, but she doesn't say that enough about what kind of value and distinct different difference of value. So I will add some uh, ideas in that and, and in order to finish, Jens, uh, I know that we, I, I, I'm over my time. First layer, people's life and people's well-being. Second, people, uh, people's, uh, and, and a second, la second level or second layer, uh, the assets. And the third layer about the uh, capacities. So in, 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 uh, in, in, in first, we need to better, uh, we need to improve the people's livelihoods, individual behavior and practice in terms of value. Second, more resilience, environmental resilience to better institutions. And thirdly, uh, broader social justice in terms to have uh, uh, better uh, public values or, or, or common, uh, common, um, common values which, in which the state is important because only the state can create uh, an institutional arrangements by laws, norms, and, and rules that warrant that people will not lose the, the rights when the government change and when some when 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 some uh, 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 um, uh, some political uh, instability happens, like for instance in the case of Brazil. So then, this is done really to finish for better livelihoods, improve assets, develop develop capacities, create better accesses, uh, and in this I I also uh, here I come together with lots of uh, references in terms of livelihoods and political economy, which uh, the reference is, of course, uh, Jens Kuhns. Second, the idea of resilience, nah? increase uh, infrastructure, mitigate um, uh, 
uh, uh, forecast support agroecology and circular economy, foster energy and food transition. And thirdly, broader social justice with better economic distribution, which the state and the policies can do through taxation and give incentives to some uh, initiatives or to promote economic growth without increased inequalities and to promote public goods, for instance, infrastructure, internet, access to internet, digitalization, I think they promote public goods. A lot of people can do better uh, uh, if they have these assets. And finally, education and culture. In this sense, I'm aligned with my uh, also a reference, uh, June Boras, which says that the, 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 the strategy to overcome um, uh, uh, authoritarian uh, fascism is the five air strategy which is redistribution recognition restitution and uh, regeneration and resistance this perspective that i am elaborating in the political economy is aligned with that what june burroughs think in another in another way so i just will stay here and say thank you so much for your attention and uh, and I'm open for uh, some uh, questions and discussion. Thanks so much, Sergio. That was uh, that was big. That was that was big picture stuff, and and of course hugely interesting because of that. Uh, it's it's also with with when one discusses or presents at that level it's of course also sometimes difficult for the for the for the listener to grasp the consequences of the of the argument what does it actually mean if one tries to pin it down because what you did was both to say we move to food and then within food it became should we say a new focus on on the reasons for it but also for the new utopia what what had to be created and your model towards that which focused on heterodox political economy of food uh, and you then sought to 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 outline what what the elements of that would be and to me that was that was in a sense really really interesting to try and 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 what well, it was all interesting but to try and come to grips with what that involved to you because it's easy when when so to to try and be something for everyone but that is not how to i mean unless one will solely rely on on that thousand flowers bloom um, <laughs> uh, then then there has to be a direction in there as well it's not it's not simply that as i also think that you were indicating it's not simply that one can one can rely on all different groups doing their bit and it will work so so there has to be an an understanding of how the different aspects uh, fit together and 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 what matters most and and so so my way of sort of just a way into getting to know more about how you see things there is to to ask uh, the questions who and how um and and by by who i mean for example i mean it's it's clear that we are or are we still working within a capitalist society where capital is in power or is is it necessary in order to to move towards this utopia to get rid of that is this something capital will agree to do so to say uh, and linked to that would it be possible to to achieve this kind of transition uh, what with big agribusiness around or are we talking small scale uh, 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 family farming agroecology which i saw pop up for half a second somewhere on, on one of the slides uh, is it has it got to be agroecology or are there ways of thinking of big farming business producing in different ways uh, to produce value or are we or is this in a sense a a, a new way of, of 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 arguing for a family-based ag agroecological revolution and how then what are the powers you, you 
you you argued for or the, that power was both power as 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 sort of rigid power relations, but also power as as ideology was was quite central to this. So, what are the changes in power that are necessary for for uh, uh, us to move towards uh, food as a new utopia? So these are my 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 my, my just few questions to 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 kick off the discussion <laughs> a bit more and 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 if it, it yeah because because I thought in a sense it is it is that so 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 there are several topics in here there is should should we a, aim for a food studies field uh, but but accepting that for the for the moment looking at what that means I think it would be great to to hear more about your your thinking there. Thank you so much, Jens. Absolutely great questions. Uh, I don't have answers for all of them. <laughs> if I would, <laughs> I, I would be very thankful, but uh, thanks to, to, to make me reflect on that. Uh, you know, all this comes also uh, with me because of my work of scientist, but, but also work, I'm also work very close with social movements social organization and in the last i would say uh, 10 years since i translate chayanov's book on cooperativism i i became completely you know in this idea well what 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 now you know how how we get out of this of these issues and with the translation of the book of, co of about cooperativism it, it pops in my mind something like the the, the debates that Chayanov, Lenin, and the Bolsheviks they have in Russia and in, in the beginning of the 20s. So I, I, I think we are more or less now in these times again, because everyone knows that capitalism, neoliberalism is not possible anymore. It's just uh, taking us to this stupid things that happens, for instance, in my country and happens also in the United States with Trump. I think finally, People can see the, the real consequences of this ideology and where and where it and where it can take us again, uh, which is destruction, as it was in the Second World War with Nazism and fascism. So I think reasonable people, uh, wise people, and and, sen and 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 common sense, ordinary people, they are touched by these issues. So, but we also have the lessons that we from the left from the communism, socialism, they, we learn of hundred years of tradition in try, try to, 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 to build up something alternative to the capitalism. And, and I hope we learn something. And I think we cannot do the same mistakes. For instance, issues of the, the size of the state, the role of the state, what, what about markets? What about private uh, uh, ownership? So this, all these things, takes me to the debate on cooperativism. And these are the questions that you are asking me, who and how? And in that sense, I find the best answer in Karl Polanyi, Jens. That is the best answer. Karl Polanyi says that capitalism itself, leave the capitalism in, in the free, in, in, in freedom, will, 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 will destroy the, 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 the land, will destroy the labor, and will destroy the money. So. It's a risk for the humanity, he says, if this, uh, tra this is satanic treadmill will live, uh, will live without regulation. So what Polanyi proposes is institutions. We need institutions. So then institutions are mindsets, are ideology. And in this sense, I think he took this from, from Marx. Uh, and institutions also means concrete regulations and norms and, 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 and law. So what I, I think in terms of the question of who, who is all the people that are sensible, sensitive to the problems that we are facing? Because the problems we are facing with climate change is, are absolutely structural, systemic. If we follow with the, the problem of, the, of, the, of destroying of, 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 the, of the herd, we cannot live. We cannot live uh, to up to the end of the 21 century. So, and 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 I I believe that human human uh, humanity will 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 take consciousness uh, consciousness of that. And then about how how I think 
the answer as I, I, I start is about a new state, a new society and new ways of market. And this I think is a, a beautiful uh, indication that Mariana Mazzucato is telling us. Mariana Masucato is renewing the political economy of the place and the extent of the state and which state, which is a which is a which is a point, which is a question that very few people from the left are, are asking for. I I actively participate in the debates in the last two years for preparing the new government of Lula, and I can tell you there is, there is an important uh, revision, but it's not enough. Most of people, progressive people, are still thinking that the state is like it's kind of you know uh, the state can do everything like it was in the 50s or in the 60s. The state cannot do everything. There is limits for the state. And thirdly, about markets, which is my topic of research as a sociologist, I think we have to think about different on markets because we always think the markets are negative. Markets are kind of devils. No, markets are just uh, 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 relations, are, are just exchange relations. And we can build markets that are in favor to, to promote social inclusion. We just uh, published a, an article in, in Journal of Agrarian and Change about that. And I hope people can, can look at a, a little bit on, 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 on what about that. So this, I would say, uh, uh, Jens, are my, are my comments, are, are my reactions to your, to your question. I think the idea of Polony to think on the self-regulated markets and the other ways to integrate, for instance, reciprocity, which is, for instance, all the social movements, all the urban people that are doing, doing uh, relations without, without uh, using uh, market relations or expropriation. And then also the centralizing or the centralization, which is the role of the state. And I think we, from the politi political economy, we, we can learn a lot with the tradition that was inaugurated by, uh, by Kalpoli, Kalpolani and in, in terms of thinking or rethinking the place of state, society and market in order to think a new perspective on, on development. Okay, thanks. Yes, that's uh, uh, one could pursue this discussion uh, further, but but let me let me hand over to to Carla first. I might come back again later. The 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 article you mentioned was, was your contribution to the special issue on autonomy, uh, which was uh, uh, to, the, uh, the, the issue twenty two one. We will put on a link shortly in in the chat. Carla, you're mute. Thanks, uh, thanks, Jens, and uh, thanks, uh, Sergio, for for your presentation. Um, I I'm still thinking many of the of the things you you argued, and uh, I would. Uh, mainly follow um, Jen's last question regarding what would be the specific, specificity of um, a field or on food, critical food questions. What would be, because I understand uh, how, um, how you, you relate food to um, um, a an important driver of, of significant changes that are not only, uh, that are mainly putting under uh, question marks uh, the, the reproduction of capitalism. And yet, for and that was a question that we also faced, for example, during the pandemic. And so my interest was on the one hand, what would be the specific in terms of analytical and theoretical approach, I, I know you cannot understand, uh, um, you cannot answer the, the full question, but to have some, some hints. And the other uh, what is maybe more specific because I, I don't, I don't, um, I have, I had difficulties in finding that specificity or uh, because we know many work, for example, Miguel Teubal here in Argentina, he for a long time related 
ag agroindustrial production, industrial agricultural production, uh, and hunger. Uh, Amartya Asen also, you, you, you spoke of uh, Picardy, but the, 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 the thing of access to food and the redistribution of, um, of incomes. There is other work of people um, in Argentina that have worked with uh, from an anthropological uh, perspective, uh, um, diving into wh what do uh, what do those people that eat eat, and how dietary changes have uh, occurred since the fifties uh, to the eighty ninety. So that, and many of the the things you you mentioned were um, were touched there, and the other question is that about power because maybe I had the the feeling, but maybe I'm 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 wrong that in your uh, presentation power was more linked to the uh, hegemonic reproduction of industrial agriculture and the and the food system. But what about power in this uh, future? How, do, how would, do, would we address power in this imagined uh, futures that, that we, we need to, to think about? Thanks. Sergio. Thank you so much, Carla. Nice to see you here. Good, excellent question. My point, um, I had not elaborated that much on that. I, I cut off some slides about that. My starting point, Carla, is something very practical. Population in the world is urban. Population in Latin America, it's absolutely urban. Urban population in my country, Brazil, is 86%. Just 14% of people live in the rural. So, how we want to promote, to propose a new ontological change for the rural, looking at just 14% of the population in a country like Brazil? No possible. It's not possible in Brazil, not possible in Latin America, not possible in the world. So we, with our critical agrarian studies, we need to look at how to connect a, 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 a sensitive proposal to go beyond the agrarian, the rural, all the, all the studies, all the proposals that we have in the field of critical agrarian studies, they are still in focusing on rural population in a broad sense, even the debate on classes of labor. But population is urban. So how we want, my point is politically, how we want to build a proposal in order to in order to get power, in order to get, get, get the, the conditions to, to make changes in the, in the rural, uh, uh, convincing non-rural people, non-rural uh, folks. My answer is very easy, is food. Food has a mindset. Food is something that mobilized people's mindset. Food mobilized young people. Food is a key driver to animate, to foster, to completely change people's habits in urban places. I'm sure that you know people in your uh, personal relations that are shifting from, from uh, beef or meat eating to veganism. In all family, this happened. Why these people are doing that? And if they change their food, their, their food habits, their diets, they are also able to change their mindsets. They, 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 they change their perception of life. So this is my point, Carla. So, and to be not, to not, uh, to, to keep in our field of political economy, we need to look at, because if not, we have to go to the other side of the, of the bank of the river, which is Foucault. Foucault, Foucault, Foucault analysis, they are very, very powerful analysis. And some, People, I see this in some articles, they are trying to mix uh, 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 political economy with Foucault. This doesn't work epistemologically, and this doesn't work politically. So my point is how I, how, how I am as a scholar 
in, in the political economy can deal with those things in terms of epistemologically, but also in terms of uh, political practice. So I need to, we, I need to, uh, I, I, I think we need to address another way in order to 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 be to 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 connect a larger a, a larger group, social group which are the consumers consumers are not it it it's it's a very let's say uh, how how i can say it, it it it's not a class it's a very difficult to grasp who are the consumers you know and and then it's the second point you know i think we need to look at how to make alliances how to make connections with these people and this is happening everywhere. It's happening everywhere. And the problem and the issue is most of these initiatives, most of these practices are completely naive, are completely Pollyanna in terms they try to change. I will change my life. I will change my uh, habit, my diet, but I don't know everything or I want to know. <laughs> I don't care about the capitalism. So this is naive. So if we want to, to really address what, what needs to be changed, which is the mode of production, which is capitalism, we need to start to, with, with this idea to, to focus on, on, on these food practices and build layers and build institutions and build these relations. So this is part of my answer. So uh, change, changes uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the society, changes in the mode of production will not come anymore from the rural will not come from the rural population. They need to come together, urban, urban, and, and, uh, and especially, uh, especially urban. And then power. Power, uh, uh, Carla, I think power in terms of agency, you know, uh, in terms of how, how you build, how you build up the power. This is, this is why I think that it's very useful to connect the discussion of how the classes are make it, in terms of E.P. Thompson, in terms of Gramsci, especially, you know, and, and not think power in terms of something like Nikos Polanzas, think that power is always the power of the state, the power that is in the structure. This is not, uh, it's not uh, useful anymore because in the today's society, with digital connection, with digital relations, the relations of power, they are more soft, you know, they are more immediate. You don't need to go to a meeting of a union in order to can uh, to can uh, to can participate in a votation system. You can vote in assembly, staying where you are at home, doing this by by uh, by by streaming, as we are doing here. So power, we need to redefine power in terms of how power is agency. Power is the capacity to the individuals to to. To, 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 to play a role, but not individually, because if we do, if we stay that again, we fall in the, in the, in the individualism uh, uh, and, 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 and this is naive in my perspective. So my point is to connect these three layers, agency, actors, institutions, and uh, structures in order to produce these changes. And, and this is, well, this is, this is where I am. Uh, I, I, I am analyzing this by looking at farmers, I am analyzing looking at this by co-ops, by through unions, and analyzing this by how these uh, co-ops, unions, and social movements, they connect to bigger structures, which is the state, which are the markets, which are the international uh, connections. That's it, or, ne or networks, I would say. Very good. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, I I have a follow up question, but I will I will I will wait for that a little longer. Sreya first. Okay, thanks, thanks, Sergio. Um, so, uh, so I uh, wanted to uh, just like basically draw you towards kind of telling us how your work relates to some of the kind of scholarship around agrarian questions, like some of which you even flagged. So this question, I mean, so my question was, would you say, I mean, so you're, you're, if I'm not understanding, I'm misunderstanding, you're obviously saying that the question of food is the key agrarian question in some sense. Uh, but I had two questions related to that. One was, 
Uh, so, I mean, Chris is here, but, you know, in, in Chris and Harun's 2010 paper, one of the things they say is like a key, one of their six or seven agrarian uh, uh, questions that are emerging is corporate, uh, the corporate food regime agrarian question. And I was just wondering if your articulation of this food question is, is different from that in, in focus or or do you see it as the same? Because there, you know, there's a very clear articulation of, you know, you know, through McMichael's kind of identification of the corporate food regime. So the cop, you know, that is the key sort of axis from where the food question emerges. So, so I, I just wanted your thoughts on that. And the second thing was um, also because you're uh, of emphasizing, you know, quite rightly that, you know, that we have to grapple within agrarian studies with the question of uh, rural and urban and this kind of blurring of boundaries in some sense. So um, in the beginning of your presentation, you would obviously flag uh, Henry's uh, uh, agrarian question of labor. And, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, part of which was this discussion on classes of labor and how it spills over these boundaries. And I've just wondered how you think your articulation of the food question links to that, you know, quest, agrarian question of labor that 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 Henry, uh, uh, you know, articulated and so widely used. So where where do you see the intersection uh, between them, kind of analytically? Because uh, because you have a much more sort of heterodox approach to to this. So thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you, Shiria, for this uh, very insightful uh, point. The answer of the first question is, I would say, quite, quite direct, quite, quite direct. In my perspective, structures are not taken for granted, are not existing itself, because structures are constructed. You know, uh, if you look at the concept of food regime, all the three kind of food regimes and other and other perspective, you know that that you have in the in the in the scholarship of uh, food studies in the political economy, you have this kind of perspective that structures e exist in something beforehand. It's not my perspective. A structure has to be constructed, and structures are 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 all are, are not fixed. Structure are they move, and you can have different layers of structures. You don't have one structure. It's wrong to think that the biggest structure is the mode of production, which is the mother of the all, of the, all the structure, and the mode of production determine all the other ways. I think Marxism are already overcome this idea that of determination of the, of the economic or the, or the mode of production of other dimensions. But in order to go beyond to the next, the next step is still to be done. And in that sense, uh, relational sociology or perspective on actors, uh, uh, and, 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 and in that sense, it's uh, the answer uh, again of your question, uh, answer uh, again is in Karl Polanyi. Karl Polanyi believe in capitalism. Karl Polanyi for him is clear that capitalism exists as a mode of production. But what he says that the mode of production, it's not, uh, it's not an homogeneous structure. The mode of production coexists with other forms, with other forms, and here and there you can fracture, you can you can change the capitalism, you know, and 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 that's the the the, the key idea. You can do it by the state, you can do it by policy, you can you can fracture the, the mode of the structure by the social movements, you can fracture the capitalism by the markets. You know, by different actions, but what you need, and this is new, and this still political economy is weak, is institutions. Institutions. This is the dimension that we need, because we we give very very uh, few or very uh, weak importance to the institutions. The theory of social movements, in and I admire the work of John Burroughs and all the people that work with social movements, civil society organization. But what's the big problem with that? The big problem is that social movements, they have a line of increase and when they reach the point and they could not, they are not able to institutionalize in, in, in where they act, they, they, they go down or they disperse. So what we need is to, how, when we conquer power, when we, when, we, when, we, when we get power, how we keep with power, 
That's the point. You know, it's not just an issue of develop to get power to increase the power relation, but in what in in what extent you you really keep with power because it, it, the, the the life the power relations is a, is a battlefield. Sometimes you won, sometimes you lost you lost some battles. And about classes of labor, classes of labor is absolutely important. But the problem is that is dealing first is dealing with the with the with the with the with the with the small part of 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 the rural society. For me, it's not enough to say that uh, that the, the most of people in the rural areas are living just not anymore from agriculture, but from other ways to get their livelihoods. This is true. I, I studied this a lot in Brazil. Uh, in Brazil, we have another name for the deagrarization. In Brazil, we call it plural activity, which is the non-agriculture income uh, uh, sources or, 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 or ways of employment. This is completely now uh, everywhere. It's in China, it's in, it's in Brazil, it's in, it, it's in all countries. Uh, uh, people don't live anymore from agriculture. They don't have their livelihoods from agriculture anymore. That's the, that's the point. And there is no problem with that. And I think this is absolutely okay. This is absolutely fine if people find their reproduction outside of their, uh, uh, their, their, their uh, agriculture activity. The problem is, or the issue is that food can become a way to produce not a precarious or, 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 or marginalized way of integration through food, to local food, let's say to a small, organ, a small uh, 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 supply change, to small production or to small cooperative. The, these rural people that are living in this marginalized, precarious ways to make their livelihoods which have some unstable sources of income through food, through the food, they can, they can do it in a more stable way. So this is why if we have proposals, not just to, to give, for instance, uh, a, 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 a basic income for these for this rural dwellers, but they, they, they give them real, real uh, uh, productive inclusion, give them real opportunities, and and food can 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 be the way do can, can can be the can be the driver. This is my point in terms of Anna Anna going uh, uh, accept the idea that we are not in in agrarian people don't make their livelihood anymore from agrarian. I agree with with the with the scholarship on uh, on, on classes of labor about that. But it's not enough to say that these people are doing their livelihoods. They live from the non farming or non-agriculture incomes. They do other things and they are doing this constantly. It's just to go to the field, just to go to the rural. Then you will see a lot of people trying to do that. And if we have ways to stimulate that, ways to foster that, we will see this in a lot of ways. For instance, then connecting food issues with biodiversity. In a lot of the developing countries, in a lot of, under, uh, of marginalized area, the same people that are living in precarity, marginal and vulnerability are the same people that are damaging the uh, biodiversity. So if we build this connection, biodiversity with basic income, with basic livelihoods, we will sort out climate change problems, uh, uh, make better livelihoods and produce better conditions of life. Th this is my point in terms of, of the, the relation among classes of labor, which is the next step in the, in the agrarian political economy to this uh, food, uh, food perspective that I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm proposing. So we, we have uh, 12 minutes left. Chris, uh, you will have the next question and, and I will tag on my question after that. Okay. So that we can did, uh, say yeah. it, then speak for the, for the rest of the time. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, Sergio. <laughs> Nice to hear you and uh, the presentation. Unfortunately, I had problems connecting at first, so I came a bit later. But you present a big picture and very encouraging and very convincing. And uh, I like your passion uh, in which you present it, because the problems are mainly uh, are crucial, as you say, and life threatening for the planet and for the people. Uh, but I would be interesting to hear more 
about the Lula's program, Agrarian program for the next few years. And Shreya already raised the idea of corporate, the corporate power, which I translate in the Brazilian and Argentinian case very much the agro-industry. You know, it's a whole institutional and the whole mindset also. And the other day we had something about seeds and so on of a, a modified seeds and how everybody accepts that discourse and so on, you know, the power, how they dominate the discourse, these agro-industries, technology, modernity, and so on. And on the other hand, you have also in Brazil, a very powerful research institution. I think one of the biggest in Latin America, which creates new technologies, for example, soya, which can be grown in dry areas and so on and so forth. So my question is, how can the, how does the government intend to tackle the agro corporate power with all the commodity chains which create a huge percentage of foreign exchange in which the country depends on so but how to transform it and you the way you to suggest transform it and at the same time also change it uh, change the system so to speak in a new system and one power which the state has in brazil is of course this very important technological, I forgot the name of this famous technological institute that you have, which has thousands of researchers and creates- Embrapa. Huh? Embrapa. Embrapa. Yeah, yeah, that one. Uh, it's well known. So there you have also the possibility of creating, let's say a friendly technology for uh, assentamentos, for peasant farmers and so on and so forth, you know, instead of just creating the seeds and technology for these big uh, corporate agro-industries. So let's take a step by step. So what are the sort of key policy issue which you think the government is beginning to try to change the, the food system uh, in Brazil? You know, so what are the initial, I mean, they might be still not fully thought out, it might be preliminary, but some beginning has to be made. You know, and this is the possibility now to do it. And and before you. you answer that, Sergio, let me just uh, put my uh, last question in as well here. And and please concentrate on Chris's uh, uh, question. But uh, so I so I I've been puzzling while 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 you've been answering question, and and I think there's one issue here that 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 it would be worth pointing out and see what you think about. And that is, so of course, climate change has to be addressed here and now, urgent. F food question is important for that. From there you go to, that can be done be because that is also a way of, uh, of, of, of building alliances of consumers. Mm -hmm. Now, my question to you is two things here. Uh, why this shift from building alliances based on class, uh, position, production, to uh, building an alliance as consumers. And I'm not questioning that one can build alliancing, alliances around consumer issues, bread and peace, uh, but why is that not based on class still? Um, related to that, how do you deal with the, the conceptual issues? You have Polanyi who obviously for all the interesting things he does is not interested in class uh, directly. And then you have, on the other hand, E.P. Thompson, Gramsci, and so on, that base their thinking clearly on class. Uh, when you are analyzing alliances, what do you base that analysis on? And uh, is it alliances of consumers, of classes, and how does that link in with what you say is your guiding light uh, Polanyi, who does not think along those lines. So, so I'm not, in a sense, quest expecting a, 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 a detailed answer to that. But to me, that these are issues that are sort of in the framework worth thinking about too. But please return to Chris's question here first. Thank you, Chris. It's, it's an immense pleasure to see you again after so much time. Thank you for your for your question. Uh, well, I have to talk to you from uh, someone that lost the debate in recent time in Brazil. My position in the group of people that advised the, the, the people that are going to the government was that 
the better to the, because my 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 position was to keep with one ministry ministry of agriculture and food this was my point and not to go back to the structure that we have in the beginning of the 2000s which is now in 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 power which is again repeat the two ministries the ministry of agriculture and again the ministry of family farming agrarian development and family farming so some of you here in the room will be very happy because people in Brazil, there are still some agrarian faints in Brazil. <laughs> I would say the most of them, because in Brazil, these ideas that I am raising for you here, I, I, I am I'm not uh, uh, I'm not in the in the in the mainstream debate. Uh, most of people, you, you probably know my colleagues, they are they are do not agree with me. And this vision is again in, 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 in power. Why is that so? My perspective is that uh, after 20 years, uh, Chris, Brazil and Latin America and the world changed. Doesn't make sense anymore to just reintroduce the same framework of, of institutional and policy as it was in the beginning of the 2000s. It's, 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 it's out of time. Time never, time never come back. So Brazilian position now in, in, the, in the international division of labor, it's completely different as it was in the beginning of the 2000s. Well, taking that in, and taking that in account, I, I, uh, uh, things are going, uh, just to, to answer your question, things are going in that way. Big challenge for, the, for this new Ministry of Agriculture, which is led by a leader from uh, Mato Grosso, which is a senator in, and is from the, let's say, progressive agribusiness, if this is possible, <laughs> if you believe in that, uh, which is different from the, I would say, uh, polluted and, de and, uh, and uh, deforestated and rentist agribusiness, which are, which are the agribusiness ones that are killing Indians, uh, deforest Amazonia, and uh, they land grabbing the, the lands, which are a lot. So hopefully, I, I at least will hope that the, the, the progressive agribusiness committed with uh, sustainability will, 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 will go on. And this other side of the coin will be fine. I don't know. Because in the parliament, in the parliament, this, this first uh, uh, stream, this first group are very, very powerful. And just today I watch on the TV, they came in and I, they are claiming back the national company for uh, food supply, which was in which was uh, moved from the Ministry of Agriculture to the Ministry of Agrarian Development. They are they are not accepting that. Even the Agrarian the Agrarian Ministry, the Agrarian uh, Development and Family Farming claim claims Embrapa, but they do not uh, get Embrapa. So Embrapa skip stay with the, 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 the main dominant. So my point is that uh, it, 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 there's it's nonsense to, to, you know, to preserve this dominant hegemonic capitalism and that, which is damaging the system. And we keep with kind of, let's say the leftovers. So my point was that, you know, I, I lost the debate because people do not give uh, a room for this uh, analysis that I'm bringing you with the key center point of food. Why I said that in Brazil? Because I said our main partners should be China in first and European Union in second. China wants our soy. They need our soy. But we can export their soy, but not export soy from in everywhere. In, in, a, in, a, in the midterm, we could negotiate that with them to not export just grain, but to, to export uh, with, with some uh, added value, the soy. And, 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 and lots of China, because I'm now, I'm now giving classes since 2018 in the Chinese Agriculture University with the, the group of Ye Jing Zong. I'm teaching sociology of development there, uh, uh, Chris and uh, colleagues. And, and they are open, not just to import uh, soy, China, China needs other kinds of uh, food stuff, not just the soy. It's a big, big mistake from people from Latin America and other countries that are, they are thinking that uh, China will just import uh, uh, raw materials. 
because Chinese middle class, they want to eat other things, even sustainable food, because China also faces a big problem with the increasing of obesity. And obesity in China is a huge problem now because the government expand a lot, billions of billions of yuans treating people in the, in, the, in the health system, in the hospitals with the problems of uh, obesity. So China is, is concerned about that. So why we, should, why we could not export our other, other products that we have plenty in the tropical country like Brazil and other tropical countries in Latin America to export to them? First question, European Union. European Unions, they are deadly looking for agreement with Brazil and, and, and Mercosur. So if they want, they have to pay for that. What they have to pay? They have to pay the, 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 the support for the emissions. Yeah. So this would be a smart negotiation. If, if uh, a European Union wants to sign an agreement with us, they have to put them the, 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 the hand in the pocket and open the, open the wallet and pay us for uh, 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 environmental service. So this would be the policy, uh, putting food in the central again with China and, 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 and European Union. And if we make good agreements with China and European Union, of course, United States will not stay out with that. They will come in and they will also dispute power. And then we still have the other countries like, for instance, Russia and, 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 and India, which are huge countries. And Brazil is maybe one of the single countries that can have this relation because we have some uh, comparative advantages. So why we should keep on, uh, Chris and dear colleagues, with this idea of family farming, just kind of, let's say, promoting peasant farming and promoting kind of a uh, residual policy. No, my point is think systemically, think in terms of, uh, of, of the total, okay? Uh, but, there, but, and, there and, can, but there you can include the, the cooperatives. You can- Of course, of course. Yes. This yeah. is my point, exactly, yeah. that's my point. We have, uh, in these 20 years of policy supporting family farming in Brazil, we have nowadays a very strong sector of family farming engaged in, in solidarity cooperatives. Exactly. They do not produce just for, for, uh, for the domestic market. They produce far more. They need to export. There is a, there is a, there is a mistake in the left and in, in people that think on rural development in the perspective of decolonial or post-colonialism post in Latin America that think that uh, uh, family farming or peasant farming should just supply national or local or regional markets. This is a completely wrong. This is a completely mistake. You can export and not do the same as the, as the, as the, as the conventional system. So this is why I lost the debate. I hope they will be lucky and, uh, and things will go on. I don't know. With Embrapa, uh, I don't know yet. The president, the, the Imbrapa is a huge company. It's very, very powerful. And Imbrapa has in hand, I discussed them to, a couple of years ago, Imbrapa has in the hand uh, the, uh, maybe a, a, a huge advantage to be the, the only and the single uh, company that really dominates technology in tropical regions in the world, in the world. So what Brazil can do with Imbrapa making connection with Africa, making international relations is absolutely amazing. So I really hope that we will be able to do that, that we will not lose again the train and, 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 and to jump in this perspective because we, the world need tropical agriculture to be sustainable. And in Brapa and Brazil, we can do that. We had the technology, we had the knowledge about that because yeah. we already did it in, in Amazonia, we did it in other regions. And we can get, we can give a huge contribution to the world yeah. about that. Yeah. And there is millions of billions of, of yeah. money in the world yeah, exactly. that can be used to, yeah. be, uh, yeah. to build up real, yeah. a real sustainable yeah. tropical yeah. agriculture without cutting, cutting the forest, without yeah, cutting the forest. Yeah, great, Sergio. Thank you very much for giving that very good answer and very complete answer with such a passion also. And I wish you luck in your future activities in Brazil. Yeah. And I think we should stop there. Yeah. Uh, it's past uh, seven o'clock here in the UK. 
and uh, so I think all that remains is to thank the audience for for its active participation, and of course Sergio for this tour de force, uh, both by way of presentation, but as much in the answer of the questions where 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 I think we took the discussion uh, further, which is always great. So uh, thanks so much to everyone, and uh, next uh, agrarian change seminar is not in two weeks time as has been announced in the general program because we are on strike here in the UK in two mm -hmm. weeks time on the Thursday. So therefore the, we don't do a, a academic activities including seminars. So in actual fact, the next, uh, so that will be postponed till maybe maybe the autumn. Uh, the, the next uh, uh, seminar that will go ahead is in early March. Um, well, actually myself presenting for right. once. Uh, but uh, thanks so much for today and uh, uh, see you all next time.